You can have all the strategy in the world and know the opponent inside and out, but if you can't deal with what's in front of you and what they're showing you, huh. then it won't, all the strategy can go out the window. I don't, I've never asked you this, so I don't know where it, where it starts. Like you were, you were born in Winnipeg. No, I was born in Switzerland. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Zurich. Basel. Well, actually, uh, Morges. So okay. it's the French part of Switzerland. Okay. My parents lived there at that time. But they're both from Basel, Rehin, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, how old were you then when you, or you came to Canada from Switzerland? Yeah, I was three when we you immigrated. to Switzerland, man. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Born there. People I'm, go there. Like, citizenship. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I was three. We immigrated to Manitoba. My dad wanted to be a farmer, dairy farmer. Okay. And uh, there wasn't really a demand for that in, in Switzerland at the time. Okay. So he was actually looking to immigrate to Australia or Canada. So it could have been Australian. Yeah. But they weren't really taking a lot of immigrants at that time. And so Canada was. Landmark Manitoba prairies from the mountains to the prairie. From the mountains, I've heard that somewhere. <laughs> so it, it's a uh, um, year three at that time. So you don't you don't really you remember it or no, yeah, not really. It's grown up in Manitoba, like sort of maybe you know those sort of snippets of memory. Yeah, yeah, probably really stemming from a photo. Yeah, or something. Yeah, 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 so. yeah. A memory someone told me, yeah, likely, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true too. So um, when so you're you're out there and um, you probably see yourself as like, oh, or back then at least saw yourself like regular kid life, going to whatever kids do in Manitoba on the weekend and after school, right? Yeah, it was uh, you know it's a really small town, small school. Uh, always kind of felt like it didn't quite fit in. Just, I don't know, maybe the immigrant thing. I'm not sure exactly what it, what it was. Just felt like that. And it was just doing farm farm girl things, you know, playing outside, building forts and doing those maybe tomboyish girl things. But um, it was uh, it was fun. Just sort of biking around and playing on farm equipment. <laughs> um. It, you have like friends, siblings that you're doing this with, so like you know everything's normal. Mm -hmm. How does like when do you meet up with Taekwondo? Yeah, so in grade school, I've played different sports. Right. My brother was looking for something other than the typical. There was a Taekwondo school in a small town nearby, and then he wanted to go do that. He wanted me to go with him. I was like, ah, we're already sort of different enough in town so amongst friends and things like that and so I was a little reluctant because you wear this white this white suit you know and it's yeah. like how do you even say the word taekwondo and, yeah um yeah so I was a little reluctant but I went with them anyway and then I ended up really enjoying it had really great feedback from my coach my instructor back then um and then also from the that was like a, a branch club which I came to realize later mm. um and then there was a main school and so got really good, positive feedback from all levels of coaches and master instructors. And uh, it did, just helped did you me. Like, were you like in the other sports that you played? Mm -hmm. Did you get the same sort of feeling there? Like, um, you know, like you get, you're maybe moving faster. Or it looks, this looks easy for you. I, I don't know what it's like. So I've always had to struggle. But like, you know, did you feel like in these other sports that you were you felt more skilled or you felt it was easier for you? Other sports? No, not so much. I didn't, well, I, it wasn't, sports? it wasn't a standout anyway, I guess. It was just, maybe I could have been, who knows. Yeah. But, what other uh, sports were there? Softball, basketball. Yeah. I think that's what I played mostly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so just, yeah, average, yeah. you know, no particular attention paid by anybody that's significant. Let's Do you say. remember your first day walking into, I remember my first day walking into, Taekwondo club, like, no, no, can't remember. You can't remember. <laughs> no, you with your brother. You're on your way. What's this yeah, going to look so like? My brother, my dad used to drive us. What was your expectation like to get? Honestly, no, I can't. Yeah, can't even recall that. How Just, old were you then? I was thirteen. Okay, yeah. so like, yeah, I should right. have remembered. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> it's funny because like sometimes to get to like really advanced levels, it's it's 
we hear that kids start like a lot earlier too, like 13. You're, mm. you're really kind of like. It really depends on the sport. Yeah. Yeah. It's maybe a misnomer because uh, unless they're early specialization sports. Right. Then maybe that's true. But actually, generally, they've, I've heard from you know, kind of that sport for life model, long term athlete development models that if you do more different sports as a youth, it's better for you, <laughs> better for your development. At some point, obviously, you have to specialize. Right. But, and then the systems generally force you to do that because, you know, if you want to play rep or whatever, you kind of have to go down that path. Yeah, really demanding schedules, mm -hmm. things but like there's, that. But there's really something to be said for that balance that you get from playing different things and being even involved in different things, even maybe if it's music or something else. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you're, so then what are your, your kind of like your earliest moments or recollections you said you were getting some positive feedback from your instructors and your coaches yeah. um i mean it, it doesn't necessarily happen the first day right nobody recognizes you the first day you walk in and still figuring out how to tie this knot yeah, right the adult, yeah. <laughs> right mm -hmm. so um so when you first came into it like you're enjoying it you had it looks like your brother's company so that's kind of like your your driver we're doing this together Mm -hmm. When did you start feeling like, okay, you know what, I'm I'm enjoying this, regardless of whether my brother's here with me or not. Of course, you're still enjoying it because he's there. But mm -hmm. when did you start feeling like I kind of I kind of like this? Was it a kick? Was it a a pattern? Was it a what was it? I think it, it really was the influence of the 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 lead instructor there in that that small town. Um, after. We would do our main promotion tests in the city. Okay. So we would drive to the city to, to the main school. Right. To do the tests. And after one of those tests, he said to me, and this part, I remember this line is very like impactful, obviously, because I remember it yeah. 20 plus years later. Um, if you train really hard, maybe one day you can go to nationals. Hmm. And what had happened just before at that promotion test was all of the people going to nationals from that club were introduced to the whole testing group and sort of showcased and may, they may have done a bit of a demo or something like that. So it was just really, it's like, wow, you know, it wowed me. And then when I went back to class the next week or whatever it was, and he said that to me like that, I made that connection obviously, mm -hmm. right? And so that impacted me. It's like, oh, really? Like I never, th you don't know what you don't know. And it's like, you don't know what the possibilities are and the opportunities are. And so that just excited me. And I was already having fun. I enjoyed the practice, you know, the kicking, the, it, it made me tougher. Like I just enjoyed all of it. So those things together, you know, when you, somebody else provides like an opportunity and direction for you. Right. So you kind of can focus your energies then. Is that an amazing thing about potential is mm -hmm. that there you have it, but until somebody else tells you, you can... I mean, you're at this young age still. You're still yeah. developing and, it's you know, true. managing your own ideas and your own thoughts. Mm -hmm. But there you were all along, capable. You had the thought. You didn't say to him, I want to make nationals. Mm -hmm. He said to you, right? So it's um, it's somebody else prompts it mm -hmm. and, and moves it along. And then there's like, oh, yeah, really? You think so? <laughs> um, and so it's, by, by him saying that to you, you remember it. Was there like a change in your commitment level after that or your thought? What 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 changed? Yeah, I think I don't remember the cadence or this this timeline succession. Sure. But certainly there was uh like come train more. Um and then I was invited to the main school to go train, which was a big deal. Okay. They had special training. Yeah. So we would go and, and it was really focused on competition and so that was the sort of succession and right. the in, increase in training load and and what have you so it uh yeah it definitely it, it created the the beacon and then there were supporting actions that then led to just increased performance and you know just improvement generally when when you um when you go from this small branch school to the main school yeah sure there's this like yeah i'm i'm good mm -hmm. and you're coming from a small pond to the to like say the bigger pond, mm -hmm. but in the bigger pond, there are also bigger fish. Yeah. And you walk in there and as great as you feel, did you ever like go, wow, these guys are really good. And mm -hmm. there's a whole bunch more now. And the, the talent level is like maybe a little different. Uh, or 
at least the concentration of talent is different. Yeah. Um, and then you're like, there's a moment of doubt. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. wait, I thought I was good. Mm-hmm. I'm not as good as I thought I was. Did that, did that happen? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. And more multiple times through the career, too. So moving there, it was like, wow, this training is really hard. It's way longer. It's way more often. All of these things, right, makes it more difficult. And right. You always wonder, can you do it or not? And right, but I, again, I think it comes down for me personally. It came down to, it was fun. Mm. I enjoyed my time with the people there. I enjoyed the activity itself, mm. and so that was always a, a, a force. You know what I mean? Like if if I wasn't having fun, would I have gone through all of the difficulties? Right. I don't know. Maybe not. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that when um, you know, it's it sounds like it's. Um, when you describe it, okay, it came and it went, but it doesn't work like that. It comes and it it doesn't leave right away. That was a long day or that was a long week. And as much as you're having fun, mm-hmm. uh, you don't necessarily notice the progress also to catch you up. Mm-hmm. You don't experience it all the way. So you're still kind of wallowing in this, in yeah. this thought. Yeah. It sounds like it just comes and goes real fast, but it hangs around a little longer than a second or two. And then you're like, yeah, yeah, okay, I'm still having fun. You didn't, no, I you think know? it's a deeper. It's not a superficial definition of fun. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's like a value, a value based thing of enjoyment. Like, I, it's hard. Were I'm you going sure. with your brother anymore? No, at that at that point, he he stopped. Right. Uh, yeah, he had stopped at that point and just completely. And so it was just me. I don't remember exactly the timeline, but he 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 had enough. Yeah. And then, uh, but I still enjoyed it, and so kept going. And uh, but yeah, that that concept of when I say fun, I mean that it, it must have been resonating with something that is a, like an intrinsic value point for me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because even even I had a moment where another one of my teammates after the after a national event he said that he sometimes like, have you ever asked yourself, do you really want this? Right. Right before nationals. Somehow that question came up. And then he said, uh, when he answered the question, it's actually, uh, no, <laughs> which was such a surprise to me because we were training together. We we're doing the same. Oh, this is somebody else saying it. Someone else. You. No. And then he asked me the same. And for me, the answer was yes, absolutely. Uh, huh? So it just, it's, it took me back because we're doing the exact same practice. Right. I look at this person and think, wow, he's training so hard. He's really good. Um, but then there's something deep down where yeah. he, that, that answer for him is no. And why was it a yes for you? Like, why did you want it? <sighs> something I was good at. You know, I was getting great, great, the external feedback, but also it hit something on the intrinsic side that was just made me want to keep doing it I, like i don't know how to were you, like, were you saying like deep. to yourself like <clears throat> that you're competitive in nature there's an element of that but it's certainly now subsided in my life right but so yeah a bit mm-hmm. so I, I mean i used to think of myself as also very competitive mm-hmm. and there's something about winning and getting on that stage and you know being the being the best not just that you could be but relatively the best Mm -hmm. that you you know uh call it ego even you know that i was satisfying this this feeling that i needed to have Mm -hmm. um or just i loved being the i loved the challenge you know just the the fight itself was a lot of fun you know to do it so you know being competitive and wanting to go to nationals um that was like your it seems like like the first kind of first thought that you're like hey i'm gonna try this when you were when you were going in did you ever get a feeling uh from anyone or from yourself that yeah like you don't belong here you're not supposed to be here you haven't earned it or Mm -hmm. you're not quite cut out for this Mm -hmm. you want it still but yeah you have a very encouraging you know group of people around you and the leaders are great but maybe a peer or somebody just slightly who'd been there a little longer going, what are you, what are you doing here? Because you are competing for the same spot. Mm-hmm. They want it as bad and maybe, maybe even more than you at that point. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there were people who may have felt that way at 
different times throughout my my career. Yeah. Uh, but I would say the 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 main person that would have taken that position would have been myself, because I won my first nationals that I ever went to. Mm. I was 15 years old. I happened to be win- in Winnipeg. Well. Wow. So maybe I wouldn't have gone to that event if it, if it had been at somewhere else in the country, but it was in my home city, and so I went as part of our team, club team, which was something. Not just anybody could go, right? Like, you had to qualify. Quali- within the group, you had to qualify. Sure. Um, and so uh, going to that first one, winning right away, having seen my teammates who trained really hard, like I said, around me, and I thought they were so deserving and... Somehow the result of all of that made me question, do I deserve this? Yeah. Like it was too easy. Yeah. (laughs) Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Not that it was, not that I felt it was too easy, but there was just this, Hmm. I don't know what to call it, that emotion, that feeling, that sentiment. And it took a long time to get rid of that. Because like guilty for winning so quickly when others are trying harder, it seems, something like that. and not succeeding the yeah. way you are. And also the category was much smaller, let's say. Cause Maybe that's just empathy for others. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. But anyway. Yeah. No, it was... Uh, it does translate into like a... It can be a pretty powerful thought. The empathy? Well, if, when it moves from empathy mm-hmm. to I don't deserve this. Like yeah. they don't have it, they're working hard, right? That's where it starts. Yeah. But then it it can translate into like almost self sabotage mm-hmm. if it's not. It can Which grow I, ne- into I never went to self sabotage, but I, I certainly uh, had this fear of failure. That was really a driving force. You know, people have asked me even before, after you won, even after I won, because I had to keep winning afterwards, mm-hmm. right? Like nationals, winning nationals then was the st- the base standard. Like have to do that, right? And there's always somebody else who could be training harder, who could come up next year better They're than They're definitely you. trying. And so in that group, there were people certainly who thought that I shouldn't be the one, don't deserve, blah, blah, blah. But You haven't put in the time yet? Who knows? Whatever the case is. I mean, I ended up being the one who Kept. won each year. Uh, and and then the next, the next challenge was, of course, then internationally. Um, and I, I just... Part of my journey was really showing up, you know, just I showed up, I trained, I enjoyed as much as it wasn't easy. And there was times where I was like, what am I doing? This is hard. I'm going to quit. <laughs> like, yeah. All of those factors. But overall, and I enjoyed it and wanted to keep doing it right until the point where I decided that's it, no more. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I sort of lost the, tail, the the train of thought there, but... Um, in terms of bring me back to well it was about how you know you had succeeded at first and then felt like you know some there was this element of not deserving or not qualifying and then you kept going and then your next standard after national was to move to to international mm-hmm. and when you move when you moved there and you went there um, again so like it's the same group of people taking you forward, right? Coaching you, training you. Mm -hmm. Um, You noticed that there was a difference when you went from branch to the main school. Mm -hmm. Then you noticed there was a difference when you went from main to the nationals, right? Like, I guess, provincials and then nationals, right? Um, And now when you're going internationally, describe for somebody who, like, who does, who's never been there, right? Um, When you say it gets tougher, Mm -hmm. What's really the difference? Because now, like, it's is it is it like big, big differences or just very, very small ones? It really would depend on the the step that you take. So, and it very sport dependent too, obviously. But for for, for you. my progression was um, after going to nationals and then competing at that level and having sort of the increased training at the main club, we would do things like have camps. So would have another guest instructor come do two weeks of really intense camp and then you would make really substantial improvements through that period of time right you would okay. noticeable right. not not immediately but then you, you notice the, the right. change both in the physiological adaptations but also the the skills right. that are improved 
Um, if you gain knowledge that you otherwise did all, not have. All types. So you do that. And then from there it was go, you know, be, be a part of the national team. And so there was training that we would do before a competition, let's say a Pan American Championship or a World Championship. Um, so it's maybe about a week or so of training there. And so then you're, you're, you're sort of upping the level again. Um, and then, so I would just keep doing that through different periods of my career at one point, uh, I was supposed to, my coach wanted me to go to Korea to train, but I felt like that was too much of a step. Hmm. And so I uh, just went back. I, I said, no, I can't do that. This is before going to the Olympics. This is before the Olympics. Um, and because the, part of the discussion was go to Toronto to train because there was a good core group of people there um, that really were tra- training more than what we were doing uh in in our in our school in our province and then anyway so that was sort of the plan he didn't want that but i really did and so we ended up doing that it was actually a really contentious moment in in the course of the career uh i was really at that point ready to walk away if if it was a forced issue because i just didn't i couldn't do it i couldn't take that leap it was too big of a leap for me i felt do you know what i mean because i i just Maybe on the surface of it, you just think, oh, it's just a camp, it's in Korea, whatever, you're going to do what you can do. Well, you've done things like this before. But I hadn't. That was the thing. Wasn't so it? I hadn't done that type of... Sure, but you had gone to daily... like a place you haven't gone, you've yeah. traveled, you've, it's... you know... What ended up happening is I went to Toronto for a two-week period or whatever, did a camp there essentially there with, those, with that team. And that was so hard. That in my mind, if I had gone to Korea, I would have probably, I felt like I would have died. Mm. Because I, later on in my career, I did do that. I went to Korea to train for two, for a month before the qualifiers for the Olympic Games. Okay. 1999. So I did a camp there for one month and called home crying two weeks of that month. Wow. It was hard. So you, you see what I mean? When yeah. In retrospect, you see this. Going forward, you don't see you know, it. But it's when, the, when people think about training, like, a lot of people nowadays since then, or I feel like they're Taekwondo schools. You must notice so, so many now around, right? Mm-hmm. Especially, but you go to class, there's stretch, there's a warm up, there do some patterns, mm-hmm. some sparring, off you go. Um, then there's the more advanced class. Well, yeah, you know, like the, the, the just, it's a little bit more intense. But when you get to say, like when you say you, of all people, you were calling home crying, what what were you guys doing in this camp that was so... It's all relative, you know. You get yeah. used to you can get sure. used to some pretty intense. But describe a, a, a day of camp. A day of camp was up at five six in the morning, running. So like at, at least an hour training. Then uh, another one in sort of mid morning before lunch, and then something in the evening, one or two in the evening. So it's like six to eight hours of training in a day, wow. which is, I think, also things have changed. You know, by sport and then. A, even just across, generally speaking, what athletes do in a given day in terms of training and load and also just sport dependent too. Right. Um, so maybe that doesn't sound like, it sounds like what it should be. It's but at the, at the time, yeah, when you're looking at it from the point of view of you're doing, you know, two classes a week, three classes a week to gradually increases, right? So anyway, the the point is it's all relative and that relative jump would have been way too much in my opinion at that time. It could have, you know, you don't know what it could be. Well, there's a saying, you know, like what's that, uh, when the student is ready, the teacher, you know, appears. And, um, and it's, it's funny how the, I feel like the narrative shifts when you first started, somebody else is saying it to you and now you're starting to take control of your, your training. Mm Mm-hmm. I mean, that's noticeable think, to me. Yeah, and you learn, right? Like you learn about yourself, your awareness grows. And so, and there's becomes, you, you start to have a recognition of what you need, what you want, and what you think is good for you. You may not always be right, but it was uh, it was a choice. And in my view, it was a good one. Um, yeah, I'm sure it would have been fine even if I had gone to take that step. I just really didn't feel. Yeah, you had to, you had to. Fine. So, so you you go to nationals the first time you win. You keep winning nationals, mm-hmm. and now you're at your first uh, international competition, um, and you win it hands down, right? 
<laughs> no, no, far from. You far. never lost. Yeah. No, I won like nationals consistently, but then the first nationals that after winning that, I went to world championships. Uh, 1999, New York City, Madison Square Garden. Wow. I'm so green. I don't even know what Madison Square Garden is. You know, wow. like it was a huge event. They did a really uh, a big event, yeah, and so New York. Yeah, and uh, I did pretty well. I won a few fights, uh, but I was really just there to like let's just try this and see what's going. But I was okay, steer in headlights, like really? literally a super noob coming from the club classes to national team. And um, so. This is the part I'm curious about, right? So, mm-hmm. like, you're you're in you're in a fight that you're, you know, you lose that knocks you out, um, and it's it's if it's still a, like what I remember, like it's points, right? So mm-hmm. you're fighting, you're fighting this fight, and now you're not like you're, you're obviously on the other side of this. You're not winning this fight. Um, when you're in that fight, uh, what I'm curious about is like when it starts sinking in that you're not. You're on the losing end of this, yeah. and there's no coming out. You got to finish the fight, obviously. But th- did that happen? Like what, during the fight, where you're like, "This is a better. This opponent's beaten me." I don't know. Was it close, or were they just were they better? How did that experience go? Yeah, I can't recall those specific fights at that competition, but yeah. the concept and has happened. If I've lost way more fights than I've won. That's for sure. Um, and yeah, so there's certainly that moment where there's like no return, like, you know, there is no coming back from it. Yeah. Um, and then you just sort of close it out. It's like, you know, defeated, but you you try your best. Right. I I wasn't the type to just sort of stand there and run the clock or something. I would just keep trying. Sure. But use it as a, a training moment, teachable moment, maybe, um, maybe practice something that you've been trying to get better at I don't know right Right. just basically stay in the game and then there's those other moments where there's still a chance a small chance maybe Mm. and I love those moments I mean that was my experience at the Olympics in Sydney uh, right to the last second for the the match that I needed to win to go to the final for bronze it was like one by one warning so the referee gave one final warning to the other competitor because she kept backing away and trying to, like she would back away counter or sometimes back away and go out of the ring. So she was avoiding. So she was trying to stay engaged enough to not get the warnings, but she, it was obvious she was a war, a war, like avoiding because she thought she had the lead. So then that final warning made me win. <laughs> and so that's everything to say that it's so important to stay in it until the uh, bitter end because you just never know how it how it could shift, especially yeah. the game now that, because the point spread is so much different. Like you can get five points with one kick, one yeah. touch. So yeah. that wasn't the case then, one at a time. Um, but it just, yeah, I just did not let up. And I made comeback and the whole day was like that. I was making making def- like deficits of three, four points, which at that time was, that was game ending. Like all you would have to do is the winning side of that competition is manage the match. Yeah. Um, and so I just managed to come back every time because I wouldn't give up, just kept at it, was relentless. And um, and that's how I won that medal. I, I always feel like those moments are a culmination of a whole bunch of other moments before that. Yeah, and that's why I always I'm curious always about the first ones where, you know, somebody like you got off to a great start. You know, you, everybody's calling you in, and now you've kind of hit like a, not a plateau, but a moment where you're like, okay, and this can happen. And this is before you go to the Olympics. This is 1999. It's only a year before, mm-hmm. so you're in New York and you don't you don't win. Did you did you place? Did you get a medal? Okay, s- yeah. So ninety nine before before the Olympics, that was a pivotal moment, right? Yeah. That World Championships yeah. because the points were very important. How you performed yeah. in order to qualify to go because they're trying to narrow down who gets the chance to go, right? Um, and so I did have that that type of match that day where I was fighting this girl. I couldn't lift my legs anymore. They were just. I don't know what happened. Bonked out, just toast. Couldn't lift them. So she was throwing these kicks and I would just 
kept blocking and managed to managed to ho- stay in it, right? Okay. So stayed in it. And then the final match that day. Like these people was, don't back off. They're like the best. Oh, no. From yeah, she was from the U.S. too. Yeah. So they're typically good. Um, she got home court advantage, home. Support. No, it was in Edmonton. I had home court advantage. Oh, you did? Okay. All right. That one. That game. Oh. So it we went okay. from 1993 to 1999. Okay. Championships. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, so that the final match of that game was for gold silver. And it was just back and forth. And the place was going crazy. And. Uh, again, just stayed in it. Probably should have won, but it was still manual at that time. So manual judging. Uh, so just just shy, just missed the gold medal. But the silver was enough then to help me qualify for the for the Olympic Games and well, the chance to go to the Olympic Games. So the Olympic qualifier. I qualified for the Olympic qualifier. You got to qualify for the qualifier. That's right. It's like it's life. Yeah. You just keep on step qualifying step. for the next one. That's it. Um, it's exciting even to have gotten that far. Mm-hmm. And for many people, like that's like that's already a huge accomplishment. Um, as you're kind of going through, like you said, you started by saying, I wanted to be on the nationals, right? And then you got there. And then comes the next one. As you're kind of getting through these points and you're like, hey, listen, I've come this far. Were you... Would you say now, like you could say it differently now, but when you were there, were you like, okay, this is great, this is enough, pat myself on the back, or did the hunger just grow? Uh, no, I think I was doing, I, I was doing it because I was enjoying it. Yeah. It was, it was often other people who kind of pointed the way. Huh. So av- on the way home from that first World Championships, so won my first Nationals ninety three, ninety three World Championships, New York City. On the way home, the coach says, you're mine till 2000. And I think he's crazy. Because, like, what is he talking about? Like, he's Olympic Games 2000. Because we huh. knew that there wouldn't be an Olympic Games for Taekwondo in 1996. It was a demonstration sport in 88. And then again in 94 or 92, Barcelona. So Korea, Barcelona. And then 96, there was nothing. And then Taekwondo would be an official medal sport in 2000. Okay. So he knew that. So he says, you're mine till 2000, meaning you're going to train and this is this is the, where we're going to go. And so I, to answer the question, I didn't see, I didn't have that vision. Even then I thought, oh, what's he talking? That's a long time away. Yeah. For a, how old was I? 15, 16 year old kid. Yeah. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, made it. Were there Were there plans in your life? Speaking of being 15, mm. you had ideas for yourself, let alone somebody else having an idea for you, that you had to maybe even put aside for this, or did it just all align? No, it aligned. I really, even as a young kid, I remember thinking, what am I going to do when I grow up? You know, like I didn't have a clear vision of that. Mm-hmm. And so I was glad to have, mm. you know, people kind of see opportunities for me. And it, it's not that. It's not that scenario where like someone is pushing you to do something you don't want to do. It, it was aligned to what I was wanted to do for the most part. Did you ever like on your way though, like these next six years or even up to then, you know, it's great. It's very, <clears throat> it, it's, it's very motivating to hear people say that to you, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, you're doing great. Keep going. Uh, great to see the progress that you're making yourself. You notice after a camp, I learned this, I can do this better than I could before. Did you ever feel along the way that you had either hit plateaus or couldn't go any further in spite of what anyone was telling you? Were there blocks like that that you ever ran into and going, you know, I, I, this is this is too much? Or I feel like I'm going even backwards. Nothing's jumping out at me, but certainly that would have happened, you know. But I, I think... Again, I was so, I was less, I, maybe in retrospect, I feel like I could have done even more than what I did. Right. If I had a little bit of a different attitude or mentality. Um, and I've said it a few times, so I don't want to keep going back to that, but it really was that I was enjoying this part of my life. I was like, this was my life. You know, my friends were in Taekwondo. I was spending time even outside of training with these people. Um so it was just what I did. It was very normal. It was like the day to day. So from that point of view, if I look back, if I had been, a, you know, even more driven for the result, maybe, maybe I would have had even more. Maybe I would have had less. 
That's some, what I'm wondering. Some people they're so focused on that's the what result, I'm wondering, and then it just that's slips exactly through what, the fingers. That's what I'm wondering. Like you're every time you you uh, bring it up, you keep you're not thinking about like okay, it started like you wanted to be on the national team, mm. um, but after a little while, what keeps you going is that day to day that you're having a good time that you're not looking at that moment as like mm-hmm. the be all and the end all and that can set you up for some disastrous like outcomes too right so like if you make that worth everything yes. and you weren't enjoying the way along the it's exactly it right it's the process right and one of our later coaches in Toronto would talk about that all the time you know you have to really also like work hard yes all of the difficult things will be there for you but you have to enjoy the process along the way before like so as you're training these next six years did you get to meet other olympians or people who had gone i mean this has never been done before right taekwondo has never been a an official sport at at, uh, at the olympics mm-hmm. you've already competed at like world championships but this is the olympics right it sounds like a little bit different than having gone very different right yeah <laughs> so when you go to world championships for taekwondo and not to <clears throat> that's not a small deal that's a huge deal mm-hmm. but it's just taekwondo at that point in time. The Olympics is like yes. everything. Yes. And this is like the way it's televised. Everything is a grander sort of appearance, would you say? Absolutely. Um, I, I can't say what's more important because like world championships or, or, or Olympics, but... I think it's definitive. Right? <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm not in a place to say, you know, what's bigger and what's not. But, mm-hmm. you know, you'd never... There's nobody who's ever gone before you there's no other reference that you have. You have a coach who's telling you that, you know, he wants to see you do it. He has no idea what it's going to look like because it's never been done. So in a way, I'm not saying that, that that's an, a disadvantage, but in a way it's an advantage because you have no references. You just keep going the way that you're going. Yeah. What were the references? It's kind of my style. Using? That's sort of how I went it, along the way. Anyway, first nationals, I don't know what I'm doing. Just strategy is kick fast, kick hard. <laughs> kick a lot you know like that was, that was it <laughs> that's it <laughs> keep it of, simple yeah keep it simple i mean you're right i mean there were some sort of references because we had the demonstration sport and right. canada did really well a lot of really great competitors um in those events prior right. but it, it was different also this the way it was set up weight categories all of it quite different right um so yeah i think i, I agree that it was it was almost better to go in with no expectation um, I had a really wonderful moment, wa- like getting to the game. So I was leaving from Winnipeg, uh, flying to Australia, and I happened to get off the plane at the same time as Clara Hughes, oh. um, cyclist, speed skater, multi medalist. Wow! You know, multi sport Olympians, big deal. And uh, asked, you know, I said, okay, I have. To take this opportunity and ask her a good question, you know. So I asked her, if you had one piece of advice, what would you give me? Mm -hmm. And she said, you know, just remember this is your sport. This is the Olympic Games going to be huge. The lights, the, you know, glitz, all of it. Um, Don't get distracted by that. Remember this is your sport. It's the same as uh, any other competition. And just kind of rein it in that way. And that was so helpful because I did get to tour the venue before the competition. And it was exactly that, just huge one ring you know all eyes on that that spot cameras right in your face yeah and i thought wow this could be really like a pressure cooker moment and yeah uh at that moment i decided i'm just gonna take it all in stride enjoy every single moment no matter what comes and uh do my best and that was was it As as a fighter um you study others before the fight you watch them you know maybe watch I don't know if you if you do that or not, but like I you didn't s- do a lot of that. You didn't do a lot. much more of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, but even if you didn't do it beforehand, you're still studying yeah, your, your, your opponent, mm-hmm. even in the match. Yes. Uh, and as much as you study others, you study yourself too. You realize that these are my strengths. Mm-hmm. These are my weaknesses. Would you say you had weaknesses looking back that you were like that looked at and goes, "This is my weak. This is where somebody can take advantage of." You know, it's my vulnerabilities. Does, did you ever have any of that? You know, I'm, I'm sure I did. Um, I was very much a person who went in and went by feel. It's maybe not a good strategy. And I wouldn't recommend it now, even for myself. If I went back, I would do things differently. But 
I did well when I did that. Like even in that, you can't change the fact. Even in that competition fact, for uh, qualifying in 1999, the World Championships qualifying for the qualifier, yeah, Olympic qualifier. I didn't want to know who my next fight was, which actually ended up serving me well because it at one point it was Korea, Oof. and that would have just messed with your head. me mentally. Yeah. So not knowing it was better. And then at the end of it, you still have to deal with what's in front of you. You can have all the strategy in the world and know the opponent inside and out. But if you can't deal with what's in front of you and what they're showing you, huh. then it won't. all the strategy can go out the window. So I would always really just focus on that, try to read the situation well. And I was always better when I was aggressive versus, you know, too sort of slow to get started. Um, and just knowing those things about myself helped me. But even in the big matches, like at the Olympic Games, for example, I, my dad noticed at one point that where there was this moment of a shift, like I was a bit conservative in the in the engagement, and then there was a shift that happened. So recognition on my part that it's time to go, like I have to go now, otherwise it's for naught. Right. And when that happens, started to be more aggressive, that's when it started to click and go my way. And that was sort of the theme throughout my career, that uh, in those moments when I would really like zero in and go. Everything works out. Everything works out. Um, you know, it's, it's I, I got to tell you, like, I mean, it sounds like there was just success and then there's... The next step was success. I didn't really plan for it. I just kind of went with the flow, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it's a pretty natural, naturally gifted situation. Um, a lot of times people look at that and going, yeah, look at you. Like you just, you got lucky. You had a gift. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know. I'm of the, I'm of the, fee I feel, or I'm of the thought that you can have all the gifts that you, you can have, but you, you, you put in time, you put in hard work. And there are times where it's like your gift, and since you, you are gifted, clearly you're gifted, um, sometimes that's even harder for people that are that are gifted because something's come easy and then all of a sudden it's not coming as easily. And it's it, the, the world doesn't just bend itself <laughs> to, you know, what you're... Your will. You're willing it, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's saying no to you. Yeah. Um, Unless this never happened. It, it, no, it, it has to have happened. <laughs> um, you just do a great job of like, ah. It's like water, you know, I like that Bruce Lee saying, yes. like, be like water. Yes, I love that. Go, you go with, and then sometimes if you're consistent enough, you wear away the other, you know, the rock. Right. Um, but... Yeah, it's not coming to mind, but I mean, even even when when life gave me something really challenging, like for example, yeah, um, just before the the two thousand eight that year, I think it was early two thousand eight, I broke my arm, and that made it so that I couldn't compete at our karting event, so no competition, and then probably could have tried to apply for an injury card or what have you. But I just decided not to do that. So that meant, and also I lost some other funding because of the economic crisis and everything. So lost funding, broke arm, decided to retire. Hmm. So arguably you could say, well, that was a, a challenge that came up and and I could have you know, pushed through, like carried on and kept going. But I had, at that point in time, had a 15-year career, two Olympic Games already, and my head wasn't in it in the same way. And so I made the decision to retire. So it, it uh, events beyond my control occurred, and I decided to shift. So, so Sydney 2000 was your first Olympic Games. Mm -hmm. um, and if it hasn't been done before, like, you know, when, you've, when, you've, when, you, went to, um, when you went to the nationals, when you went to the world championships, you, you've seen things that have been done before. Um, was it a thought in your head at all that, you know, that you would be the first, you know, Canadian 
right? At least medalist uh, in Taekwondo. And um, I mean, mind you, it is the first time it's being held ever. So it's the first time for everybody. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what you say to yourself. Mm -hmm. But um, there's Korea there. There's um, USA there. There's whoever the best. I mean, Iran. Whoever's out there who does really, really well at Taekwondo tournaments. Um, you know, there, is there a doubt in a moment in you that says, like, you know, it's okay if you're having fun along the way. Mm -hmm. But when do you start actually saying to yourself, actually, I, I stand to be the best here? I don't know if I ever do, honestly. Yeah. I, I think... <clears throat> My approach to it all was I I trained the hardest I'd ever trained in my life leading up to the 2000 Olympic Games. I came there, I was really prepared, in shape, feeling great. And again, I just, I wanted to take everything in stride. I wanted to enjoy every moment. I wanted to not stand in my own way, meaning I didn't want my thinking, you know, negative self-talk, any of that to stand in my way there will be enough things in life that are going to present as a challenge and try you know competitors trying to take that away from me so for sure wasn't going to let my let me be part of that you know story so like yeah don't let your limiting thoughts stand in your way so really make take every single opportunity to put yourself in the best position to do well I mean, if anything, like, you know, Master Bowser, you're, you're like the master of, of, of your own mind, right? I mean, that's clearly. But you said, like, don't let your s negative self-talk. So you do have negative self-talk that comes up. Yeah, like that whole thing that you don't deserve, yeah. like you're not deserving or, and it, is it even like a, a form of, like a fully formed thought or s sentence yeah. that you say to yourself? Maybe, maybe not. It could just be like this subconscious residual like thing that's, trailed along your life you know what I mean um so it was really I, I realized in again in that 1999 world championship where I had so many so many thoughts coming up and getting in the way and I said no I'm gonna park all this just any negative thing comes just parking lot parking lot parking lot was there a fight in particular that stood out to you while you were there in, in the Olympics uh, on your way yeah maybe after you said you fought a finalist and then you you were in this this pool this and 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 then there were fights along the way and you said it was that kind of an experience where you were just coming back all the time yeah what stood out to you was there one particular yeah definitely i had two fights uh lost luckily to one of the finalists russia and then went to the repechage round and in there i had to fight uh venezuela and she was someone I fought many times before in the Pan American region. So she certainly used to really beat me up. She really was very strong, very good, few techniques, but really excellent timing, power, everything. So that stood out. That, that That's the one I already referenced it. Really, that was the one where I won by the warning. Mm. So, I mean, that's what stands out is just not giving up. Tapping into even techniques that I wasn't typically training or doing very often. Like what? Like 360. Okay. And to the same kicking side that she had. It's kind of technical, but anyway, so it, it just worked. And it made her push back all the time. And again, that's what made her lose in the end. So that stood out. And then, of course, the final match it was against Croatia. Had never fought with her before, but she was very strong, you know, taller than me, uh, but again, I just had my head in the game. And even though I was behind, I knew like I could still come back. And At the beginning of the Croatia came. match, mm -hmm. um, you knew it was now, this is the Fine. final. For bronze. For bronze. And um, you never you never faced her before. She obviously, um, so when you're like, was it three rounds, five rounds? How many? Three rounds. Three rounds. So in, in your first round, um, how did that first round go? Were you winning or were you losing? I think so I was losing. I don't even remember. <laughs> Love that a much. I don't remember any of the other stuff. I just like like leave. It. I mean, this is like the the big. It's a highlight moment, right? I'm and you you might have replayed it in your mind. I figure a, a few times to kind of think through and prepare for the next Olympics too, right? I mean, that's that's what was also happening. It wasn't your last one. It was just your first one. Yeah. So you've you've thought about this maybe, but if you haven't, then that's fine. But 
I'd be, I don't know, I'd be thinking about this round one, round two, like down to the second. You're not like... Um, no, I, f- I, I, I think about... And you were behind. Uh, yeah, and it, it aligns more with the fact that, like, even the fact that I didn't have really great strategy in terms of the specifics of like, this is the technique I'm going to do and this is when. Right. It's more about the, 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 I don't even know what to call it, the theme around it. Like, what yeah. is the, the mental strategy? What kind of, how do I want to feel right. in my body? How do I want to feel in my mind? You know what I mean? Like that's that. Those are the things that I focused on. Got it. And then even when in terms of recollection, I have terrible memory, which you might have picked up on already. But <laughs> it's 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 about the feeling I had, the the intention I set, or you know, like those are the things I remember, the lessons I learned. So, like at at no point in time in that match did you go like I'm behind. Uh oh, I got to park a negative self thought. No, at, at that point that was all done already. It's done. Like You're in-, in in those moments, it's like okay. You, you know, you, you like, okay, example, if I finally got ahead by a one point, I'm like, I know there's a minute left or whatever. I know she's going to attack. I have to, I can't just avoid because I'm going to get caught or I'm going to get a warning. So I have to keep engaging and shut it down. That was the kind of thing I was thinking about. Yeah, like time flies really fast yeah. at that point in time. And every single little small thing is like magnified. Things shift fast. Yeah. Like you're ahead, you're behind, you're ahead, you're behind. And so you have to shift mentally and stay in it, even if you're ahead. And that's what happen- happens, happens so many times. Like, I don't, I think it was London. I don't remember the fighters now, but a UK guy and he, he thought he won. And the last second he got clipped. Yeah. And he lost. Right. And it's like, oh, just heartache, right? So anyway, those are lessons. You learn from those lessons. So uh, in 2000, you went to, to Sydney. You you That's a huge accomplishment. <clears throat> you get the bronze. Uh, now you're preparing for 2004. And you're kind of like a little bit of an incumbent. You've had success. Uh, you go into 2004. Uh, did you go in the same mentality? What was different between, if anything, between you know 2000 and 2004? I think similar. I mean, 2000, I was by myself. 2004, I had a teammate and it was, yeah, it was just different. The preparation, we still went to create a train. Um, To be honest, in retrospect, this is a perspective now, is everything just felt like it was short, came up short. The kicks came up short. Mentality was not quite, you know, dialed in. So is this something you recognize in in the in the moment? No, you don't. No, no, I don't think so. It was, it was, you know, you're just trying to do your best, and uh, but it just, yeah, it wasn't there in the same way. And 2004 was where was it? Athens. It was Athens. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's like that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, and and so uh, here's my question to you then: When you go to, you get a medal. When you go to, you don't get a medal. Is there really, in your mind, then, a difference between the two, uh, like, as far as your experience, your growth, your appreciation for those moments? Well, Does the medal make that big a difference to you? I mean, I have to say yes, because it was just the coming, everything came together, like the stars aligned that day. Right. I felt great, performed well, came back, you know, all of those great, great moments, Um but at the same time, it was just amazing to go to an Olympic Games once and then twice. Amazing. Yeah. And being at the Olympic Games where it all started, Athens, incredible. But uh, in terms of, you know, looking at the two experiences, I think, and just thinking about like how I came home from them and, you know, what, what the experience was. At both times, I actually traveled after and so this sort of leads into a bit of that transition and what we know as like post games blues can happen to people, right? Everybody, athletes, coaches, even even volunteers, because it's such a built up moment, right? It's such a pinnacle moment. I've never heard of post game blues. What is? Oh, so it's really uh, because of that, because it's such a build up. And whether you do well or not, it can happen after that you kind of go into a slump. Yeah. A bit of maybe like a depression could end up being like a depression, but right. pre pre that level of uh, seriousness. So you don't oh, take that negative thought and park it? You can't do that at that point? Well, I mean, this, this is when all the stimulus goes away and right. like, right, all the 
go back to reality, right. uh, whatever that is. And sometimes you don't know because you focus. Some people just literally have that focus of up to the games and then there's nothing else. Right. So then you get to the other side of that and then you're like, what now? So yeah, that can be hard. And then even for, for coaches and administrative, you know, national team staff, things like that, sometimes jobs are on the line. and Yeah. So there's really a whole other side to the magnificence of the Olympic Games, right? Well, you've had a great transition. Like you've gone from, you know, athlete, um, competitor, champ, like, you know, medalist. And you then also had like, you said like a, a pretty big letdown moment where you, you know, you broke, was it your arm? Mm -hmm. um, and there are opportunities that could have passed you by because of that. How did you then sort of transition how did you manage that transition? You're now like, you're not going to win that national again now. You're not going to go to the world champions. You're not that anymore. Mm -hmm. um, is that something you say to yourself? Is that something like, um, like, and, and again, like I'm just thinking as a competitor, I would, you know, I'm thinking, what's my worth, right? At that point in time. Mm -hmm. um, how do you, how did you kind of navigate that? So it's really interesting because I have multiple ang like perspectives on this now because my I work in this field yeah. also yeah um, but taking myself back to that moment I really didn't know and and there weren't research as many research a few resources but not as many as exist now sure um, so it really was that like what the, what am I going to do now and. And I really had this strong sensation, thought that I'm like 10 years behind everybody else that's my age. That's how I felt. Sure. So it's, it took a long time when you ask, well, like, what was that transition like? You think, oh, yeah, it's like maybe a year or something like that. I almost look at it as like 10 years yeah. of transition, different yeah. phases of that transition. Okay. Um, and so in the beginning, luckily, you know, because of how our Canadian sports system works, there was funding involved which was uh which made available support for tuition okay so i was able to go to back to school okay so that's what i refocused on and then also i sort of needed to broaden myself so you're older than everybody when you went back to school uh, yeah right yeah so you go from being like the 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 head of well like, I, and this is because i just i did a few courses here and there through my career my sport career I, but never full-time never really uh focused on school mm -hmm. yeah, and I had the feeling like I just found it difficult to do that I thought I couldn't do this at the same time I think in retrospect I probably could have would have been difficult but doable sure so then you come out a little bit better right like you retire and you already have a degree so you can move more quickly into right next stage um, but not everybody can do that and so I was one who chose not to yeah so waited more or less so looked at what what can, what do I need to do to graduate finished that uh and then took took uh, it took took a while took some yeah it was really it was tough i had to employ some of the things i learned as an athlete too about like just refocusing and parking lotting certain thoughts and so you know, when you're that also when you're that good at what you do in this world yeah you don't maybe have the same uh, talents maybe let's just call it for lack of a better word in this world yeah so getting through it and navigating is that much more difficult too yeah because you're not seeing the progress at the same rate you're not succeeding the same way you were before yeah definitely that and <clears throat> in in some respect you think sometimes you feel like as an athlete and making s that level of achievement you think oh I, I should be able to move over here right away right and that's just not that's even it harder. sometimes works for yeah. people but Often it's not the reality. Correct. You do need to go through the same sort of paths that others have gone through. Sometimes you can kind of, and we try to support this too in 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 uh, networking and getting sort of the experience that you might have missed as a student. You know, doing doing uh, club activities and meeting different people, and like there's benefits that you get in the network that you build through doing that. Right. And so we tried to support this as well but um so so i kind of missed some of that and and just tried to use every opportunity i got 
later on to build that back up, to build in those things that I might have missed. Um, you know, a, lo a lot of a lot of people struggle with this part, mm -hmm. right, of, of that transition. And a lot of people struggle on their way up when they're, you know, preparing for whether it's a competition or something. Looking back on it, and you've stayed in, you've stayed engaged in the whole industry, right? Today, you're you're, you're a huge part of supporting other athletes. Um, what have you noticed, uh, like, when it comes down to seeing others who quite often could succeed as athletes or as, or as anywhere? You've taught a lot of classes, and you mm -hmm. see potentials in people, mm -hmm. yet they don't then materialize their potential. What have you noticed? What would you say has been the one or two things that get in the way of that, that if they just took care of? It's like a million dollar question. Um, I mean, I have the bag of cash. Or this is, this. <laughs> I think it's um, usually it's our own thinking that is getting in the way. Really? I think. Is it that? I, yeah. Most times, I think so. Like, it, it's really like, why, you know, why can't you do something that you think you might be interested in doing? Like, you put up all these reasons why not to. Mm. Uh, so it's really getting that out of the way first. And then he helping people see the connections. Um, because I just, I, I'm thinking back to my own experience of like, hearing about even transferable skills, for example. Like, okay, the things I've learned as an athlete, how does that translate to work or career or anything else? You just can't make the connections always right away. You don't see it in yourself. So it's just sort of helping people to bridge that. And that's that's sort of in some of the work I do now. But in terms of, let's say, if I'm thinking in the Taekwondo school and the student, um, it's really helping them build that confidence to try even. Mm. And to be okay with failing. That's a hard one. That was a hard one for me. That was like fear of failure. Remember, it was a really big piece. And so... You never show any fear oh, <laughs> that I've ever seen. Yeah, it's there. Of any kind of failure. It's there. Oh, yeah, all the time. All the time. Can you, but Want you to park, be good. But you, park, you can put that in the parking lot. You that yeah. you had the ability I try. to I do, do this. I do. I do. I do. But it's always there. Uh, less so now. But certainly, I think it's a driver, a driver for me now. How do you it's use that fear of failure as a driver? Preparation. Don't want to. You don't want to. You want to do well. Need to prepare. Mm. Mm. So, yeah, it's sometimes we even over prepare. But I, I'm working on that too, so that I can be like go with the flow a little bit, uh, because I. I I do that well sometimes in some scenarios, but when there's something new or uh, novel, then I'll want to prepare a fair bit. Like, let's say public speaking something, <laughs> you know, over prepare. Yeah. Uh, but I have to get comfortable with going with the flow because I think I'm, it, it's better usually that way. Well, and just to wrap up, I mean, was, is there a point in your um, when you're training, you do you you say, yeah, I am now. I'm prepared. I'm ready for this. I've trained as much as I possibly could. I'm deserving. Yeah, because you, you you had an I'm not deserving moment. You had the other part where you get you can get to. Yeah, the I'm deserving is there, uh, but I'm still a person who there's no perfect. You know, even even answering survey questions, I can never give the extreme. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so because I think that's very like common for high performance athletes. Um, you always when you're at the top, you know there's more. You can always learn more, grow more, improve, and so you you leave space for that. You know what I mean? So there's no perfect. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, but not everybody thinks that way. No, no. Um, I think that's one of the reasons why, um, like, I, I think it has to do with that moment. Like, if, if this was it, if this was the end, it would make it hard to then go be beyond that point, whether whatever happens after that. Even if you accomplish it, mm -hmm. then what? 
Well, that, that sets you up for and even. that's it. There's always more. Like there's even with the, when thinking back on the transition, you know, from from athlete to whatever's next. Like this is such an iterative experience, and just you just keep learning, growing, and and in my in my trajectory, even just recognizing where my strengths are, where my values are around helping other people and supporting and like this is this is all over a 10 plus year journey it didn't just you didn't just turn the page after athlete and then it's career and right boom you know you're ceo or something yeah some people are that lucky but well i don't know so i was going to ask you like if some people are struggling today with that um just you having walked that path um what would you say to them? Well, it's pretty timely, you know, post post Olympics. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would say give yourself grace. What does that mean? Give yourself grace. Like, don't put so much pressure on yourself to know the answers to everything. People will always ask, right? What are you doing now? Mm. What's next for you? And you can have time where you don't know. You don't need to know the answer to that. Maybe the next the next is just to figure out the next. Do you know what I mean? Give yourself space for that Mm -mm. because it isn't necessarily absolute a flick of the switch. But how can you give yourself grace when you feel like you're so far behind already? Well, because if you don't, are you going to rush to make a decision? Are you going to do something that really isn't aligned just because you feel pressure to move in a direction? You know what I mean? Like uh, there's, it's, it's not about necessarily taking tons of time. It's give yourself the emotional space, the grace there to find the next and to explore and also to recognize that you were the top in something doesn't mean you need to be the top in everything. Mm. You're going to go, you know, you're going to take a few steps back maybe and learn a lot and that's totally okay. Take something to for some people to get okay with that. Yeah, quite often the metal or this or whatever, it feels like it defines we, we, it, it defines us. We make it define us. Yeah. Versus realizing that that's part of it. Yeah. Not all of it. Yeah. I mean, you just put so much emphasis on this. And, you know, the media and the lights kind of point there. So that must have been important. Yeah. That must have been all of it. Well, it's really interesting. I mean, even bringing it Not here. having the lights on you anymore. Yeah. You know? Well, that's it. I even bringing it here, right? Like it's, it's something that it's, it's just nearing the anniversary for me too. I think it's September 30th. So yeah. It's kind of timely, but this now is a, a wonderful experience and a tool that I use to connect with people Yeah, um, to also give me the opportunities to learn more to have new experiences um it's not always the case and certainly for for young you know olympians paralympians medalists they will have that experience and maybe be able to use that to 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 grow and find their net whatever's next for them i, I don't know if that does that make resonate does uh, that make sense? Uh, well i've never been an olympian no but in know, terms, terms of the story right like it's it's uh it doesn't define you. It's one of your experiences. Uh, but sometimes, I think you were kind of alluding to that. It's sort of people connect to that right away. Yeah, I just find that there's so much emphasis, there's so, so much focus on a moment or on a particular point Yeah. that A, if you hit that point, then there's nothing after. Or if you miss the point, then there's nothing after. And, it's, and for... For uh, those who go far, Mm -hmm. from what I understand, they have to have such a level of focus that it almost sets you up for like, well, don't think about anything else. Focus, focus, focus. Mm -hmm. Train, 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 train. What are you training for? (laughs) What are you training about? How, How do you not define everything to be this one moment? Yeah. You're training for it. This is what it's all about. And then to say to yourself, no, that doesn't define you. Come on. 
yeah. right? Like it's a hard thing to do. It's it's really interesting because like the work that I do, it's with it's a program called Game Plan. Okay. Through the Canadian Sport Institute Ontario. Okay. Um, and it's really based on the premise that it's exactly what you're talking about. That the identity is not just on one thing. Yeah. And if it is, it's going to be skewed into this experience where typically, like you, you you just said, focus on this one thing and then that's it. What's next? The idea is that you develop yourself as a whole person. Mm. And you have multiple facets to attend to. And by doing that, you actually feel better and you will perform better, stay in sport longer. And when you're ready to leave, it'll be it'll be easier because you will have developed yourself in skill, in education, maybe in career a little bit. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's a whole person and you will be a better athlete for it. But within that, there's a lot of nuance. So like myself, I was somebody who didn't think I could go to school and train and do everything at the same time. You have to understand your own energy levels, your own, like, where are you doing, where are you thriving? So that self-awareness and reflection is very, very important. Uh, and you have to test that sometimes. But the point is, everyone's different. Yeah. We have to leave space for that difference. So some some athletes, maybe even on the same team, we need to go to university and do other things, have social activities, and then they're going to perform amazingly. And others then need to do less outside, and they'll perform amazing. So it's just understanding that, and it's not always the same. It might change over time. But it's having that support there and that space to allow for it. So it's not just all eggs in one basket. I've heard that. I was about to, that was a thought that was coming to me is like, you know, putting all the eggs in one basket. Yeah. Um, but then some people say, put all your eggs in one basket and take really good care of that basket. But look at the risk. Right. right? But I would argue those people, they still have other parts of their lives that they're attending Absolutely. to relationship, family. Right. You know, so it's a matter of which part. Which ones are you dialing up and which ones are you dialing down so that you are feeling at your optimal? We have this, you know, we talk about, people talk about life, work-life balance or just yeah. life balance. Yeah. That was like this image of the, the a rock structure, you know, like the, the rock uh, kind of statue. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But it, it's balanced as in it's not falling over, but they're different sizes. They are. And so... It's not the scale equally balanced. And I think that's a really great sort of representation of what is real. Like it's realistic. At some points in your year or your quad, you know, four year period, if it's quad, quadrennial for sport, it's, uh, you know, you're really focused on training and then everything else is a smaller rock. Or if you're a business person, you go back to school, you do your MBA. And then, so education becomes bigger, and other things become less, less, uh, less dominant. But you can't sustain that for a lifetime. Do you know what I mean? It has to be sort of phases. What's uh, what's next for you? <sighs> are you giving question. yourself grace? Yes. Are you? Yeah. Are you giving yourself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am. I, I just miss seeing you at the club. I love what I do yeah. now, and uh, I just did finish my MBA through my program, through Game Plan and uh, at uh, Smith School of Business. So it was an amazing experience. So I, I'm looking for what is next, open with the sort of my typical approach to see what, what comes. Um, but I also love what I do. So I'm not in a rush. Um, thank you so much. It's for my just pleasure. taking the time to come here, bringing us this amazing... Um, representation not only of yourself but of your um you know of your club that you started at of our country right like i'm mean, you're an ambassador for us mm -hmm. and it's such a such a privilege knowing you spending time with you training with you um getting your guidance even today as you're speaking i, I keep thinking about like so many consistencies between the way you talk here and even the way when you're training you yeah. know us as students how you know, how you approach the challenge, whether it's today's exercise mm -hmm. or this year's targets or that medal. So you've, you're so consistent in the way that you approach it. It's unmistakable, like your style of it. 
and uh, clearly it works. So thank you for sharing it. Yeah, it's my pleasure. It's it's it was wasn't sure what to expect today, <laughs> but it was fun to just go on this bit of a storytelling journey with you.